I see some rose hips and they're just kind of down over this little embankment here. Rose hips are kind of like the little seed pod thingy that forms after the um, wild rose is done blooming. So everyone knows the Alberta wild rose, it's our provincial flower, that little pink wild rose. And then when, when that rose goes to seed, um, it forms these little thingies. These are left over from last fall. They're all kind of shriveled and dried out. And they're um, really high in vitamins A and C. And you can actually make jellies and jams and things out of them. Inside, hold on, I'm gonna break this one apart. There we go. So inside, you can see a little seeds. What you probably can't appreciate are the really little fine hairs that are attached to the seeds. I'll try and get a, uh, an icon photo of it so you can see the hairs. Cool thing about the hairs is that even though this little seed thingy is not poisonous, if you swallow this, when you pass the hairs a day later, they will create the most intense itching you can imagine. So you can actually make tricky little itching powders out of this stuff and hide them non-toxically in people's food with very unpleasant side effects for the person who eats them. Oh, got a runny nose. Um, so when you do make jellies and jams out of them, you kind of need to, you boil them um, without breaking them open so that you, you get the flavoring and stuff. It's really sticky stuff. You get the flavoring, but not the hairs, and then you strain it um, before, before you put it into the jars and stuff. So it's, I guess you don't really make jam out of them, more of jellies. So this here, right here, is what's left, the little sepals, I think they are, of the wild rose. And then here's all the little, I don't know, Lyndon, what are these? bits called, whatever the center of the flower is. On a wild rose, they're kind of yellowy. I don't know my flower anatomy, but I do know how to make itching powder. I'm about a mile and a half into the Prairie Creek Trail, and I've come across a hardwood forest that is completely demolished by beavers. And they have completely renovated the creek and made a big pool out of it and here's a little spot where they're coming out of the pond and up their little mud ramp off into the trees here's this this here is a pathway that they're using and there's a ton of trees that have been cut down by them. The part that I'm in right now is a lot of old beaver damage like that. But I did see one really huge hardwood tree that was uh, about a foot and a half in diameter that they had um, chopped down. The entire creek is kind of spreading out all over onto the into the forest partly because of spring flooding, but a lot to do with the beavers. So I'm thinking of putting up my camera here and trying to catch one of these little guys at work. So it's not just beavers that are uh, populating this forest. We have uh, apparently some moose action going on in here. There's quite a lot of very fresh moose droppings. And I did see some uh, moose footprints earlier and I wanted to cast them, but there was a, they were too wet. There's too much water in them. So yeah, there's more of those. And like literally six feet away, there's another huge, another huge pile. I'm off trail here. I don't really know. I had to go off trail because the beavers have 
flooded the rest of the trail. So this, this here was the trail. And I'm having to try and be very creative in picking my way through the forest, but it's all part of the adventure. We have some moose browse here, which is where the moose chew off the tips of willows and things. Um, it's one of their foods of choice. I actually just passed a big pile of moose droppings here. And they'll eat that year round. They prefer, moose prefer to eat browse, which is like wood and shrubs and things rather than grass. So if you ever get a pet moose, don't try and feed it hay because it needs wood. So we are in the middle of a downpour. It's a good thing I've got my hat and I don't need my rain jacket because it's, I'm actually quite warm because I just did a steep climb. But I found something you won't really like. This is bear claw marks. And they're very old because it's all kind of scarred in. And I don't know, you can just tell it's old. But one, two, three, four claw marks. And then if you come over here, I don't know if you can see these ones because they're kind of more in the dark, but we have a couple more bear claw marks. I haven't seen any sign of bear on this trail at all today. And I don't, doesn't really strike me as bear country, but clearly it has been at some point. These are moose tracks. You've probably all seen moose tracks before, I bet. I love footprints and I haven't seen any like bears and cougars and actually cool stuff. So here's a moose track. It could be elk, but this isn't quite elk country and I haven't seen any elk poo and I've seen a ton of moose poo. Um, so in the grand scheme of moose, that was a small one, but I'm pretty sure it was moose and not elk. Okay, I have found some uh, showy Jacob's Ladder. It's a little purple flower. Oh, it's really coming down. Um, uh, Polymonium pulcherimum, and it, I usually see it at really high alpine elevations, but um, we're not that high. We're at about 1,700 meters here, and ugh, I'm kneeling in some thistles. Um, most of these are closed up because it's such a cool rainy day, but Here's the little Jacob's Ladder flower here. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that the, it gets its name from the leaves, which I suppose are ladder-like, but I'm just guessing. So you didn't get a very good picture of that, so I'll post a better one. It's a really pretty flower. Oh, it's slippery here. Here's a little moral of this whole story. Um, when you're out hiking, you will probably find people have left garbage out. And when you do, please, please, please take the time to bend down and pick it up and pack it out. A lot of people don't realize they have dropped garbage. It's probably not malicious or on purpose. They did it by accident. And don't look at it like you're doing them a favor. Um, you're doing the wilderness a favor because this is all of our backyards and it's up to us to keep it clean. So please don't be too proud to bend down and pick up garbage. More poo, but this is um, a cool later stage of decomposition poo. So this poo um, is, you can't even tell it was poo, but I mean it was. I'll take my word for it. So. There's little pieces of bone still left behind. They are too, obviously they're too small to tell exactly what kind of bone they are. But the cool thing about this, I think, is that you can, you can see how, how big of chunks of bone these carnivores are swallowing and passing. So, if I had to take a guess, I'd say this wasn't a fox or something that small. It was probably a wolf, maybe a cougar. I suppose it could have been a coyote. It's just the pieces of bone seem just a little big for me for that. 
Right next day, I have found some forget-me-nots. And I, I don't know exactly what species of forget-me-nots these are. There's a couple different kinds. Um, I'm used to the, the high alpine ones. These ones are not those, but they are still forget-me-not, and they are still really pretty. They are teeny tiny little blue flowers with yellow, orangey centers. These are one of my favorites. I really quite like the color of these. I think it's such a, a nice intense, but kind of soft blue at the same time. Not a color that you see very often in nature. I guess that's why I like them so much. Um, so these are juniper berries. Juniper berries are what they use to make gin from. And they, ow, they grow on a very, very, very prickly shrub. And if you break one open, hold on, and smell it, it has this really, really, really very, very strong kind of a pine sappy smell. Oh, look what I just found. Anyways, it smells really cool. It smells like gin. I just found a bone. This looks to be a humerus or something. Um, and one cool thing, when you find bones, leave them behind because they're really important. They act as a mineral source for little rodenty things. So if you look really closely here, you can kind of see that little mice and things have been nibbling on it. Squirrels probably too, and chipmunks and little whatnots. Here's uh, another, another end of it. There's probably a deer. Uh, upper upper front leg bone. The marrow is all gone. Um, yeah, so anyways, leave it where you found it. Take a picture of it if you want. But they rely on those bones um, to make their own bones. Oh, it's kind of a very gray, dreary day out here. Um, it's still awesome to get out. So if you can learn Anything from this video or from me, get out and see this stuff firsthand. Get down on your hands and knees and, and you have to get down low sometimes and get prepared to get really muddy. Um, you won't come home, you won't come home as clean as you left, but that's not the point. The point is that rain or shine, be prepared for the weather, um, but get down on your hands and knees and just really look and appreciate. Um, what there is out here and start learning it. And that is a perfect segue for the fact that I just spotted a fairy slipper, which is an orchid fender. Come here, buddy, over there. This is cool. This is the first fairy slippers I have seen this year. I usually see them a little earlier than this, but I haven't seen any yet. So this very tiny, beautiful, delicate flower is an orchid, Calypso species. Has a lot of names, I know it by fairy slipper. I think it's also called the Calypso orchid. So there's three of them here. And I wouldn't have seen them if I hadn't, well, partly been looking, but also been prepared to get down on my knees in the mud and the rain and get wet and if you're prepared to do that you will learn a lot and you will um, see things that you didn't think existed out here and things that you maybe took for granted or didn't appreciate but if you work a little bit to see this stuff you appreciate it that much more if you get wet doing it.